Lord Hollick, you chair the House Lords Economic Affairs Committee that's been looking at HS2. Have the government made the economic case for the line? We think not, uh, not yet. Uh, the committee is very much in favour of investment in rail infrastructure and the two issues that the government is seeking to solve is one a capacity issue and the other one rebalancing growth in the UK economy. We think on both cases the evidence we receive so far does not suggest that the case has been properly made for what is less than £50 billion for many years. One of the government's main arguments for HS2 is it will address long-term overcrowding, particularly on the West Coast main line. How big of a problem is that? Uh, there are two issues on capacity. One is the number of trains that can travel on the West Coast Main Line and the other one is obviously the capacity on trains and overcrowding. As far as the former is concerned, the uh, West Coast Main Line is uh, pretty at or near capacity and there is a need to find ways of increasing the number of train paths, the number of trains that can travel on the line and there are a number of ways of doing that uh, which could be uh, deployed. Uh, such as uh, in-cab signalling, which would enable more trains to travel on the track. As far as overcrowding is concerned, the West Coast Main Line long-distance trains are around 43% full across the week. That rises to 50 to 60% during peak time, and it is on Friday evenings and at weekends where there is a, a capacity problem. There's also a capacity problem on the London commuter rails. Again, there are a number of solutions for dealing with this, uh, such as lengthening the trains, uh, such as uh, changing some uh, first class to standard class, which would create far more capacity at a much lower cost than HS2. Uh, one problem we've had is that the government have not uh, revealed current passenger usage numbers and they've cited commercial confidentiality as the reason. So that has uh, prevented us from doing a detailed analysis of whether there is a real capacity problem or not. And will HS2 rebalance the UK economy? The evidence suggests that the case has not yet been made. The evidence from other countries is that uh, high-speed rail links tend to benefit the capital city and that's been the case in France and other European countries so it'll be London that is the main beneficiary of this. Evidence that we've received points strongly to regional rail links, improved regional rail links such as the Trans Pennine Link or HS3 as it's been called which would actually have a much greater beneficial effect on the economy of the north. And finally, talk, looking at cost, could be anything up to 50 billion. Is there more the government could do to keep the cost down? Uh, so David Higgins, the chairman of HS2, appeared before us and is very much committed to getting the cost down. And there are a number of ways they can do that. Uh, the train could, in fact, in fact, travel at a slightly slower speed. That would shave some, uh, some of the costs off, possibly up to 10%. Uh, the train terminus could be at uh, Old Oak Common, some two miles uh, west of Paddington and that would mean that there wouldn't be very expensive tunnelling to get into uh, Euston and the complete redevelopment of Euston and there are a lot of lessons to be learnt from abroad and it's interesting that in France they're able to build uh, railways at a ninth of the cost per mile uh, as compared with the HS2 budget. <laughs>